We've talked a lot about the various kinds of correspondences, similitudes, and resemblances that structure the early modern understanding of the way the universe works. Next time, we're going to look at the most popular analogy of all, which is usually referred to by the words microcosm and macrocosm. And we're going to check out a particular example of it in uh, a work by John Donne. So the microcosm macrocosm is a pretty straightforward analogy. It's this idea that the human body is simply a miniature version of the world, that various parts of the human body somehow correspond to things out in the world, from rivers and mountains and whatnot. Uh, we should know that this is an analogy. It's not just a metaphor. They're not just saying there's a, a like or as. It's not a simile. Uh, they, by virtue of this system of correspondences, believe that the similarities this, of this analogy between the human body and the world are fundamentally, fundamentally meaningful, right? They're not just a, kind of a way of talking. So that's really an analogy. Um, we notice that if the Earth is at the center of the early modern universe, the microcosm macrocosm puts the human at the center of the universe as well because our bodies mimic the world whereas other animals bodies do not exactly do so so we're going to take a look at uh, john donne's meditations and i thought i'd just tell you a little bit about john donne so here's his birth and death dates squarely in the early modern period roughly contemporary with shakespeare uh, he lasted a little bit longer um, he is a poet and a cleric, uh, and John Donne has some wonderful uh, kind of scandalous poetry uh, from his younger years, um, but he also was a deeply religious man. Uh, he became a cleric and eventually was appointed the Dean of St. Paul's in London, so he was a well-known uh, and uh, important cleric of the time. But he remained a poet throughout all of that, so he wrote quite a bit of religious poetry, uh, in later life. And we're not going to look actually at a poem, although the language in the meditations is poetic. Um, and so we probably should know that Dunn is one of what were called the metaphysical poets. And if, you're, if you've done philosophy, you probably have complex ideas about what metaphysics is. But by and large, when we say the metaphysical poets, we're really referring to their interest in super complex metaphors and analogies. Uh, Dunn is very fond of these, and you'll see them in this meditation as well. The meditations are a series of texts written, uh, autobiographical kind of uh, texts written, during a period when Dunn was sick. And I will tell you, by the way, that in the early modern period, if you get sick, uh, you are unlikely to say, oh well, this is just a cold, or I'm sure it's not serious. Almost any illness could lead to death. So. Uh, if this were the early modern period and you had a cold, you would not be in class today. You would be back in your room trying desperately to make sure that you didn't die. So there you go.